Travis with T-Customs Productions, T-Customs.com. As you can see, I have Ableton Live open right now. And I want to, in this video, address a couple issues that people have been having inside of Ableton Live with their sample-based production using the sampling how-to video that I created a number of years ago. So if you haven't seen that video and you want to know exactly how to slice samples in Ableton Live, definitely reference that video because that's kind of what I'm going to be expanding on in this video. So the number one question I've gotten asked time and time again in the comments, I've tried to answer this question a number of times and try to reach out to people individually, but I just wanna go ahead and address this in the video. The number one question is when you are using this slice method, so for those of you, you know, you know what we're doing, we're actually adding the Ableton warp markers as our slicing points. So if I play this sample, Okay, so let's say those are the slices I want, right? Those are, the, those are the sample chops that I want. So a lot of people have asked me, you know, I go to right click on the audio after I select my sample points and I don't see a slice to new MIDI track, okay? So let me just go ahead and say, if you don't see a slice to new MIDI track, that more than likely means that you're not using a full version of Ableton Live. You're using a light version or using some sort of demonstration version or trial version. So if you ever don't see a slice to new MIDI option when you selected your, your slice points, uh, just make sure they're using a full version of Ableton Live. Otherwise, uh, this method will not work. So the second and third question kind of tie in together. Basically the second question that I've gotten asked so many times is, when I slice my new track to MIDI, so after I've set my slice markers and I, and I slice the new MIDI track, people were confused that their time stretch was lost. When they, when they slice the track to MIDI, that the time stretching that they did ahead of time, it, it reverted everything back to the original audio. Now what I mean is basically I've got these slice points and all I've done, I haven't even manipulated the audio at all. I've just used the markers thus far to just create starting points. But what you can do, because this is the Ableton Warp Engine, this is typically what this is used for, these warp markers, is actually to stretch audio. In this case, we're just using it to slice the sample. We're using it as starting points to chop the sample up. So what people were saying is, okay, so I, I time stretch this piece and I time stretch this piece. So, you know, but then when I slice it a new MIDI, it reverts back to its original speed and tempo. So the time stretch was lost in that, that transition. The reason why is because in this case, when you're using this slicing method, the time stretching is not being taken into account. This doesn't matter. Unless this stays in audio format, it's only using these starting points to slice the new chop. It's not using the time stretch information when you slice it to MIDI. Now, if you wanted to actually do time stretching ahead of time before you actually slice the sample, which typically if I want to do that, I'll do it later or I'll just work in audio format. Like if I want to do a lot of time stretching, another way you could sample is you could just have different pieces of uh, audio and you could just work with the sample chops in audio form. And so this could be your actual you know, chop sequence down here. And then that way it'll give you full flexibility. You've got audio uh, snippets and you can actually do the time stretching and fully control everything there. But if you want to work in complete MIDI and you do for whatever reason want to time stretch ahead of time, what you'll have to do is once you get the audio the way you want it with the time stretches in place, what you'll have to do is right click on the audio and you'll have to consolidate that audio, okay? Now what that does is that solidifies that audio with the time stretches you put in. Now the only problem is that now you have to go back and re apply your sample slice point. So if I slice this sample now that it's been consolidated and I've put back in my, my slice points, now you'll hear the time stretch is the way that you set it. So the third question I got asked was, it kind of ties in with the second one and it's the same idea. Say you wanted to transpose the sample ahead of time. So right now my warp engine is not enabled and so now I'm gonna just transpose the sample like I did, like I showed in the previous video. So I'm pitching this up and at the same time, I'm speeding it up. Right, so if I went back in here and now that I've got the sample transposed, now I wanna go back and put my slice points in. So I slice this to new MIDI track. And now what you're gonna notice is the pitch did not retain. It's the same original speed and tempo.
Okay, so now what I would do typically is if I wanted to go back to the original tempo transposition that I had, I would just, now that I have a global macro set like I've showed in previous videos, I would just set it back up to plus nine and I would be back to the transpose pitch and tempo I was at from before. Let's say for whatever reason you wanted to retain the pitch that you've got set here, what you would have to do is then right click, consolidate, and now you'd have to go back in and put your sample slices. And now you hear that it's automatically at the transposed uh, speed and pitch I had it at. This is the way that I found to do this. If you want to actually manipulate the audio ahead of time and actually retain that manipulation whenever you slice a new MIDI track, you gotta make sure that you reconsolidate the track and it's not using the original audio that you were working. And again, the other option is to work just in audio. So you just slice your samples and manipulate them in audio and that way you have full control of the time stretching and all that in an audio track. So again, I just wanted to address these few issues that a lot of people seem to have over and over again. I hope this helps. If you guys have any other questions related to sampling in Ableton Live or other related topics, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to shoot a video and kind of explain what's going on. In the meantime, make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.